And uh, we could go, and I guess the same thing goes for three replicas, and we don't have to talk about three replicas. So. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Um, okay. Last thing. Okay. Let's start from here, Brett. Okay. Last section of this. Mm -hmm. um, I have my replicated cluster, mm -hmm. which I've expanded, mm -hmm. which I uh, basically has the equivalent of. 15, 30, 45, 60 hard drives minus the capacity uh, uh, that, that I've lost on it. My two per 15 that I've lost for my RAID. And uh, so two per 15, so I've lost eight drives out of that. So I have the equivalent of, I'm going to torture myself doing the math in the head, but I, I've got 60 minus eight, so I have mm -hmm. 52 drives. Mm -hmm. And then I have 90% of that. Mm -hmm. So I have you know, 40, 46 or something like that. Um, and uh, so I've got 46 drives worth of capacity. Um, okay, along comes the boss comes in again. And the boss says, uh, you know what, this is extremely valuable data. What happens if a meteorite strikes? You know, there's a meteor shower coming up. Well, you've got bigger in, problems in, in if August, a meteorite strikes. So, well, you know what? I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what you want to say yeah, to your boss. Yeah. That's what you want to oh, say yeah, to your yeah, boss. You don't want to say that to the boss, <laughs> you know, right? It's a yeah, bad idea. Now, don't put down meteor shower risks, right? Because... <laughs> Um, okay, so his meteor shower coming up, and he says, we got to make this safe. we got to put this somewhere else. Geo-replication, asynchronous replication. Tell me about asynchronous replication. I now have, I said, 45 hard drives. Let me round up to 50. I have about 400 terabytes of capacity. 400 terabytes usable. Sure. And I want to geo-replicate usable. What all has to happen in that? Okay, so the quick, high-level, easy thing. Uh, you need a cluster volume of equal or bigger on the other end, and you're Makes done. Makes sense. Okay. So now I'll go in a bit further of it. But uh, this is synchronous replication, meaning when you make a write, it's committed to the brick and the brick pair. Okay. And until both say, I got it, it doesn't tell the client it's done its write. Okay. Cool. So... That's fine. Low latency link, 10 gigabit between all these. We're laughing. Easy peasy. Okay. So if you do that same synchronous replication over a long distance, you can quickly see that if you have to wait for both pairs, but there's a good 30 millisecond delay in between those, you're going to be waiting a long time to commit it right. And then so, boom. That's where geo-replication comes in. It's asynchronous in the way that it's built to be sent across high latency links, like a internet connection, a WAN connection. And the idea is it'll send changes, incremental changes, as it finds them to the receiving volume. Okay. So in this case, you don't even have to build a, you don't have to build the exact copy of the volume. It just has to be a cluster volume. Okay. It has to be as big or bigger. So we could take that same distributed cluster that we built in example one and literally just tie them together like this, because we don't care about high availability over here, maybe. It's a backup, yeah, you don't need it's a high backup. availability. You don't need to buy yeah. twice as much, you don't care. Yeah. So we have, what, I think we had 400 and ter 480 terabyte terabyte. plus our fudge factors. Yeah, so you, there's, this is, and there's the best part of your replication, how easy it is to set up. Like most of the time, if you need to replicate something like this, you gotta get our sync out, you gotta write your own little bash scripts and then run your tests and hope it all works. Geo replication is make sure the two can communicate with each other across an SSH connection. Okay start your session, and yeah. then just watch. And then it's really cool, actually. You'll go in on one computer, you'll write some files, and then just like five to 10 to 30 seconds later, it'll just magically appear yeah. across here. Right on. Yeah, no, yeah. it is really cool. And then, and that's, that's kind of it, I know. Um, that, that's it, that's so, it for geo-replication. And let me throw one thing in here on geo-replication. Um, if we were gonna geo-replicate 400 terabytes, we'd probably wanna bring these machines into the same building and put a high-speed yeah. link, like, like 10 gigabit or multiple 10 gigabits together to get the initial sync done. Yeah, right? a, good, a good seed is uh, definitely useful there. Um, Cause you raise a good point, if we're gonna talk about sending something over a uh, internet link and say you're sending from like LA to somewhere in the middle of nowhere America, and uh, your latency, or not even your latency, your bandwidth is 10 megabits or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's <laughs> going to take you're a long time to move or, that Months away. or years sometimes yeah. when you get up into the hundreds of terabytes or the petabytes, right? So yeah. what you can do is uh, you can bring it in, bring it, um, build this cluster, load your data onto it, uh, 
start the geo -repli replication, it'll move it over relatively fast across your 10 gigabit link. And then you just pause the session, bring them over to the new spot, turn the session back on. Come up on. and they'll sync up anything that you missed yeah. during the time. And then so. what it'll do, it'll start, a, it'll start a history crawl and then it'll understand all the things that it's missed. And it'll start its initial crawl and then eventually you'll see it popping the files in. But it's one of those things where it's, it's a set it and forget it type of thing. Okay. Watch the status, the status. <laughs> Watch the status of your geo replication. You yeah. would do this from your master nodes, like yeah. from your, your main cluster. Yeah. And it'll tell you the health if something went wrong and whatever. And I take it you can get alerts if it... Oh, there's, it's all built along the alerts, you're logging, and then again, I love plugging our support team, but at any point there, it's like, oh, we're seeing something funny. So your replication, you've said over and over to me, it's just one of the joys of, <laughs> of Gluster, right? Yeah. It, it's the your replication is so easy and so reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and I, there's other cool features of, like, you can cascade your geo replications. So, yep. yeah, so like, so we're, say we got site A, and we're going into the safe spot, but that's not safe enough for you. Want another copy? You do this again in the third, and then you just you literally cascade it, and then you can, and it just you work off this one actively, and then it sends to here, and then it sends to the next one. You can even do two, like you don't have to cascade. You can have two geo replication geo replication sessions going to different nodes. So you have some flexibility there to make it work within uh, your 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 needs. Okay. And uh, you know, it brings me up one thing I always found fascinating: working out storage bandwidth. When you start working, you know, what we work in, and you know, hundreds of terabytes and petabytes is where we start. Mm -hmm. And then you start to realize that the highest bandwidth connection we have is FedEx carrying hard drives, hmm. right? Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. I know it's funny. You hear yeah. that, and you go, "Oh, shit. yeah, he's right. That is the fact." You know, we always think of our data connections yeah. being fast, and it's like, yeah, I mean, you, you can get up in the, you know, the huge number of gigabits. Mm. When you, you put a batch of hard drives, 10 terabyte hard drives in a FedEx package and they zip from New York to Los Angeles overnight. Yeah, mm. yeah it's amazing how fast Which, it is. Yeah, and honestly, <clears throat> this is kind of an aside, but like we were saying how ZFS is so simple. Another one of the amazing things about ZFS is you have a big ZFS volume, you pull all those drives out, you send those drives away and then just randomly put them all back in the same system. It'll know. It is, ZFS is just... Awesome, isn't it? Yeah. It, is, it is absolutely yeah. awesome. So, yeah. like, e instead of just like sending one drive, oh, I got to send a RAID drive, I got to make sure I get all the slots, you literally just send a box of drives and say, make sure you put them all back to the same server, yeah. Yeah. and you're good to go. And that's all you need to yeah. do. It's yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, okay, I got one other topic I really like to touch on, and, and uh, maybe this will fit in. We can talk about this. We, had, uh, we, we have a uh, number of clients who've done really cool systems where they have two locations. And they put a cluster in each location, and in and their clusters are split up, and they geo replicate, and they use half their cluster mm. to store. They got the other half the cluster stores. Let me draw this. Sure. May may I step up to the board again, Brett? And uh, and this is just really cool. And some people this may be useful to some people. Um, Storage cluster in my New York location, and then I have my Los Angeles location. They both need storage, okay? and I, I create a cluster. I'm using that box as an entire cluster, and split the cluster in half. Mm -hmm. okay? So this is active, active NY, and there's active and when you say active, you, this is a so this is a replicated cluster, just as we talked about is, last example. Yeah, it could be replicated. Or it could, or be, it could it be, be distributed. It could be distributed. It yeah. doesn't matter. Um, and, okay, this is a disaster recovery geo replication thing. Split in half. So I got all my people out there. And, you know, this cluster, I, I say active, it means it's sharing out through my network to, you know, all the all my clients out there. So all my employees in at my location in, in each of those sitting at their PCs or networked and they're using the active cluster. That's where the whole storage is happening. Yep. Okay. And I'm saying, and, and they're going, yeah, but we need disaster recovery. We need backup. We need geo replication. In the same cluster, we can geo replicate LA over to New York and New York over to LA. You got it. And then if disaster strikes and a meteorite strikes Manhattan, okay, and just one little server room. So <laughs> I, st I still have a problem because it was a little meteorite and just hit the server room. Um, then we could do a failover to there and yeah. we could operate over a slow connection, but it'd still have my data. 
Yeah, exactly. And I still have and my the, data. And then at that point, you could, yeah, you could send the drives over, you could oh. push the data, you could send the servers. There's a couple different ways you recover that way. Yeah, and we have people operating on that, and it works, yeah. uh, works really beautifully. And just that flexibility of Gluster to set up, and you can split things up, and you can configure, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's a it, it's really beautiful system. Mm. for. And again, w within the, the realm of what it does, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and the, really the biggest exception on it is number of iNodes, right? Yeah, the metadata performance. Me yeah, metadata it, performance. Yeah, the metadata yeah. performance is, is sometimes lacking if you, if, you, if you fill up directories too big. In, in, the, in the, you know, I'm just going to say well, arbitrarily the 1% of situations where you break that rule, the other 99% of situations we've got a reasonable number of iNodes. Exactly. Then, uh, then it's the spot to be. That and just remember when you expand on your replication, you got to move some data around. So that's right, the data move around. And uh, if we get back, and again, so it's at the scope, but if we want to talk about Gloucester because you love, or, or sorry, about Seth. Seth because you love Seth so much, uh, Seth, we're going to do a video on Seth. And again, just talking about architecture of a Ceph cluster and what you're going to notice about Ceph is the expandability is. The expandability is, is, is a lot more, more uh, fluid, a lot more uh, wing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like just on, you, on the fly. On the and, fly. And less restricted. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a bit more of a learning curve to maybe understand the new concepts, but once you get it up and running and you understand it, you'll go, this might be the easiest storage system I've ever administered. Yeah. 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 Once, once you got it figured out. Once you got it figured out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But Gluster is a great solution. Great tool. And it's geo replication makes it just, if that's part of you and your disaster recovery, the geo replication makes it a winner for you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, so like Forrest Gump says, uh, that's all I have to say about that, Brett. Yeah, and if, if the people watching at home have any questions, comments, or anything at all, uh, tweet us, Instagram. YouTube comment below, call us, email us, info old 45 fashioned drives. Email. We do old fashioned email. Yeah, we do old fashioned email. We even can do in the mail post, if you'd like. We still do that? We still receive cool. those. Yeah. yeah. We're flexible. Yeah, yeah, screw it. You want to put it on a floppy drive and send me a message that way, I'll still read it. <laughs> right on. Anyway. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah.